speaker for the day probably uh, needs no introduction to this group. Uh, he's been a frequent uh, flyer, if you will, of a member of uh, the Chamber of Commerce, served in, I think, pretty much all the different capacities and roles, including former president of the Chamber. Twice, he says, so two times, not president. Uh, today, we have here with us uh, the mayor of the city of Beaverton, Mr. Paul Sanford. He's going to share with us some of the activities and events and things going on in the city of Beaverdale that they're able to do with the city's uh, tourism commission. So I'll turn things over to Mayor Paul Sanders. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if I like to use a paper when I make any kind of talk. This is a topic I'm pretty happy to talk about. Tracy tells me I have to. She says, I'll try it. Stop. So, bear with me. Uh, Happy to be here today. I appreciate the invitation to be able to come speak to you all today. Um, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things going on with the City of Beaver Dam, primarily for our Tourism Commission and some of the events that have been undertaken over the past few months. Just a little background on how we got to the point where we're at right now, because I know a lot of people look at you and you talk about tourism in Beaver Dam, and they're like, when did the tour buses go wrong with you? And a lot of people don't really understand what's involved. But what got us on this track several years ago when I first came into office and we had a relatively new commission, we got to looking, like with anything else and any other organization, our costs were going up and everything was going up. We're in a situation in government, we can't really reduce services. You can't cut out services for the most part. So we were trying to look for ways to generate some new revenue and try to do it in a way that would not be detrimental to the community. Uh, Municipalities, the CB can pay you and the judge who's been there for are limited on how they can raise any kind of revenue. Uh, we are pretty much limited to some type of taxation, usually property tax, inventory taxes, insurance premium taxes, or whatever like that, which we, uh, we all have in the city of Virginia. But I will say, and I pride ourselves with that, we have some of the lowest in the whole region of those tax rates. But to start to increase those kind of tax rates, not only are we putting a burden on our citizens, but we're putting a huge burden on our business community. Uh, the business community is where the values are at property-wise. The business community is where it's at on insurance premiums. The uh, uh, business community is where it's at on uh, tax profits and uh, income. We didn't want to do that. You know, we're like everyone else. We're fighting to keep every business we can get open, and we want all the new ones we can get to come in. So we try to look at some other revenues and activities we can do. One of the things unique to state of Kentucky is what they call the restaurant tax. And I know all of you are familiar with it. I just know you live in Ohio County. I know you're familiar with it. Uh, it's limited to certain five cities in the state of Kentucky that can do that, and Beaver Dam was one of those. I spent some time, about six months, we did some research on this, and I spoke with a gentleman who used to be a judge in a little town called Jackson, Kentucky, in Eastern Kentucky. And uh, they set theirs up. He said we was able to fund a lot of stuff we do already anyway with that, which takes that burden off the general fund. Uh, so we got to look at, okay, we think this is the best way to go. Number one, it's a, it's a voluntary tax. If you don't want to pay it, you don't have to. It's your choice. Uh, we're going to say, we're looking around our community around here, uh, most everybody in our vicinity, especially up in the LWK Parkway, pretty much have it. So, you know, I've had people tell me, well, we'll just go into Central City. Well, that's fine. You can go pay Central City. And, you know, you don't and, that's, and that's all right. But that's kind of a background on why we did a restaurant tax, and thus, because the state law had to create a tourism commission. And, you know, uh, if a new business contacted any of our local officials today and said, hey, we're looking about locating your community, we're going to pump about $11 million in, uh, into your local economy. We intend to pump $11 million plus every year. There's not a elected official in this town with, or county who can do everything they can to get that business in. In 2014, over $11 million was pumped into Pine County by tourists to both direct and indirect funds. That's money that is either spent directly at hotels, restaurants, for gas, or funds that go spend on other things which turn over to tourism or you know a number of different things like that so that's how we kind of came about this we look around with 11 million dollars spent here and in all honesty it was done without a lot of push from the county. i'm not trying to take away from the, the governments here or the tourism commissions here but we were limited in our revenue it's not like we could go out and put ads in new york times and all these newspapers we just didn't have the funds to do it so you know, I feel like when you look at other areas around us, especially in rural Kentucky, we've done pretty well without the promotion. This put Beaver Dam in kind of a unique position where with the restaurant tax and the service commission, we had a way to do some money. And not only would it take care of bringing stuff in to bring people in from out of town, 
kids providing all kinds of events and activities and facilities. Our own local people get to do stuff every day. And the best thing I like is somebody else for the most part's paying for it. The Tourism Commission was created in the summer of 2013. Uh, since then, we've worked to expand tourism opportunities within the community. Uh, we, like I say, brought tourism dollars in, but we also provided facilities for our own people. The commission over the past, especially the past year, we've really gotten more active and involved and kind of on the field a little bit. We've assisted with such local events as the uh, our Christmas Festival and the Strawberry Festival. Uh, we brought shows, and I'm really proud of this one, a lot of people had fun of it. Two years ago at Christmas, we had the Chainsaw Chicks, the ice sculpture here. And you know, they worked us in the third Walt Disney World schedule. I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I can't imagine telling the CEO of Disney, I'm busy that night, I'm going to Beaver Dam. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff that's happening. People are coming to Beaver Dam that we've never seen in Ohio County before, or probably never heard of us before, but we're bringing them in here. Our Strawberry Festival really grew this year. This was the first year that the Tourism Commission had a lot of input in working with the Strawberry Festival. But I know we're at the point now, we're having, uh, especially some of the entertainment vendors calling us asking, what's your plans for next year? How can we help? Can we get involved? Uh, one of the things this year with our car we're cruising, we had over 240 vintage cars from West Kentucky and Southern Indiana lining up now Main Street on that Saturday afternoon. Brought in a lot of people that normally would not have been here. Uh, Last year, of course, we had a system with the Sparkson Park. This year, the Sparkson Park will be at the new Beaverdam Park. Uh, we've got big plans with an air tipping concert and uh, doing some fireworks. We're kind of in a position where they'll be able to be seen all over town. So you can come to the park, you can stay outside and see it and still enjoy a good show. We provided in the last year and a half assistance to the Ohio County Band Festival, the Ohio County Soccer 5K Glow Run, the Ohio County Boys Basketball Christmas Tournament. We've even extended beyond our city borders by providing some money to assist with certain town days and quarters. You know, this is tourism fund commission that we consider, even though it's technically Beaver Dam and it's tell everyone state law. But we look at this as a county <coughs> project, a county debt. You know, we want to reach out to help everybody else. I look at it when I was talking to uh, Larry Smith, was mayor of the time, I said, you know, see look how people are paying into this. We want to show you have a way to bring something back to the community. And that's, that's what our goal has been all along. Uh, of course, the commission uh, was set up primarily to assist the city of our revenues, but we set up to find the maintenance and development of our new Beaver Dam Park. Uh, we've got 33 acres right there in the heart of downtown that we've been working on for, I think, we're on our fifth year now as far as building and development. Uh, you know, we've been able to have such successes as our farmer's market. It grew from three or four vendors the first year. Now we have over 20 that have their own dedicated vegan, and they're out there every Tuesday and Saturday, and they're drawing in some good, good crowds of people. Selling that Kentucky proud produce to our residents, but they're also making some revenue for our local farmers. Part of the park is our Ray Chapman baseball complex, which we're very proud of. And I have to say, that was the impetus of getting the park started to begin with, uh, with the new construction of Beardown Elementary School and the Longstar Public Baseball Fields. Uh, they tried playing out around different areas of the county, and it was, it was really tough on parents, especially those who had two, and even some of those had three and four kids, different age groups that were playing in three different communities at the same time on the same night. So we went in, we, we had the four fields, uh, we put in a state-of-the-art uh, concession and press box facilities, and uh, one of our things about that, it's paid off a little bit, in uh, the end of this month, we're going to have 24 teams from Western Kentucky coming to Beaver Dam. For six days of baseball, we're hosting one of the regional tournaments for the Kentucky Little League State Tournament this year. Uh, pretty impressed for our, just our third, I think it was May of 2012, in the middle of the season, we're starting playing baseball. So I was really excited about that. But that alone, they estimate, is going to come between $150,000 and $200,000 in our local economy. That's just for people coming to play baseball. Take it from one who had one playing baseball and travel ball. You spend it and you travel. So that's what we're looking for. We also have a girls, I think it's a U10, but I hate to put that on here, tournament schedule for July 11th and 12th. We have a co-ed softball tournament schedule for July 24th and 25th. And several others that have already inquired about dates in August and September and October. Again, this is a facility that's available because of our tourism commission and those tax dollars. We have over 600 kids, local kids, playing a little bit of baseball over there every Monday, Tuesday. Now I think it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And uh, they just finished up their season and still some tournaments going on. But, you know, that's, to me, one of our biggest things. We've been able to do some of this stuff and take care of stuff for our kids. We keep hearing the youth is our future. And we've got to have stuff for them to do. And uh, I think 600 kids is, is, you know, a pretty resounding number to what we're able to take care of there. Of course, we've got our playground equipment. We've got basketball courts. We've got our small lane. We've got fitness equipment and everything else out there. So, you know, there's a lot we have for the kids. There's still a lot of stuff on tap that we're planning for the future. 
course, our crown jewel out there, as many of you know, and I don't you know, into it, it's the new amphitheater. Uh, we have a $2 million state-of-the-art facility that's nothing like it in Western Kentucky, Southern Indiana, and what they're telling me, Western Tennessee. We've had three shows out there so far. We've had uh, Lone Star, Joe Dippy, we have had the Federal Railroad, we've had the Newsboys, which brought in a large crowd, and Marl Haggard was in Beaverdam last Friday, or two weeks ago Friday night. You know, that's one thing I've had somebody tell me. He said, not many people sat around and said, yeah, I saw Merle Haggard in Beaverdale. <laughs> but we had over 2,000 people. In those shows we've had, we've had them come from as far away as Colorado, Connecticut, Wisconsin, Michigan, Louisiana, Florida. Just sat through there the other night, walking through the parking lot with my son. We, we kind of just, followed. I like to look at the license plates. You know, like to be able to see where they're coming from. You know, we started out in Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia. Virginia, Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, North and South Carolina. Train air were out in the Gator room watching the traffic. There was a car pulled in from Missouri. <coughs> I'm going to say probably in our late 20s, so I picked him up and said, We'll take you up to the gate. He said, A little bit of walking since the music had already started. And being the nosy one I am, I asked him, I said, Okay, we appreciate you coming. And I said, You're from Missouri. I'm just curious. Are you traveling somewhere else? Said, no. I saw him on the website and we decided we'd come to see Beaver Dam. He said, you know, Beaver Dam's not what I expected. <laughs> I said, we get that a lot. But, uh, and they came back and looked me up before they left and were, again, complimenting the facility and what we've done here in a small town. You know, I can remember two years ago when this was even first start talking about it, I've had people, a number of people tell me it'll never happen. It can't be done here. As my wife would tell you, that's the wrong thing to tell me. You know, we're going to show you this. You know, Right now, uh, the concerts are bringing business in. I know after the hangar, I've got a few as well. Wendy's was full, Denny's was full, but it was full. McDonald's, I think, was really full on one. I think they were closed the second one because of the things or something going on. But, you know, those things happen. We try to do what we can, let everybody know what's going on. But uh, our sound system was actually was highlighted four different national publications this week that deal with sound. Because uh, Jason Tierney, who's our chairman of our tourism commission, wasn't picked by accident. He's a sound guy. He knows the equipment, like the back of his hand, and uh, he's one who led us through a lot of this as far as that type of stuff. Uh, when we have our entertainers come in, that's the first thing he's doing. He's at, to the point where I say you're actually regular with As the show is getting ready to start, he's with their managers and their engineers. Okay, what have we done right? What have we done wrong? What can we change? And you know, to date, Unless something happened the other night that I'm not aware of. The biggest thing we had someone tell us, this was the Newsboys, who brings in, we have our own sound system and our own lighting system, but the Newsboys brings in their own sound system with them because they do a whole show, a uh, sound like show. And he said, you know, these doors coming out on the stage, they were about six inches higher. We really made it a lot easier on our equipment. We wouldn't have had to set it off and do it in two different trips. I'm like, you know, Jackson, if that's the worst thing we've done, and we use our own sound anyway, so it accommodates us, we're doing okay here. Uh, Heath Eric. I don't know how many of you are familiar with him. He's in there from McLean County. He performed over here with the market at Art in the Air last Saturday night. And from the stage, he made a comment. He said, you know, people in the industry are learning real quick where Beaver Dam is. Again, he said Beaver Dam, but to me, it's still in my county. We're all in this together. In September, uh, Eastern Kentucky University is doing a tourism work study tour, which will consist of tourism professionals, entrepreneurs, government officials, and educators. Beaver Dam Amphitheater is scheduled to be the first stop of a three-day tour of Kentucky venues. So, it is getting out there and people are learning about what we've got going on. We also feel very strongly that what the commission is doing it can be a direct um, assistance to economic development here in the county. I know, of course, I've been on the chamber president, I've been on the fiscal court, and now mayor for several years. We've been to different organizations, groups, where they talk about economic development. And so many of the people now, yeah, they need the workers, they need the workforce, they need the natural resources, but they also are interested in quality of life and what your community has to offer. <laughs> I was talking to one gentleman at a conference in Owensboro. Uh, I think he was from Madison. He said he had one industrial recruiter come in, and he wanted to see the boys' restroom at the high school and the sidewalks. He said, they could tell by that, just see what kind of pride you took in your community. But they do look, if we're going to bring management teams in here, what do you have to offer? They like stuff like the art guild, which I have to give them kudos for all the work they've done. They like stuff like the parks. They like stuff like events and activities and stuff for their kids to do and their families to do. The entertainment stuff is, you know, it's just all great stuff they look forward to. And we feel that this can be a positive attribute that at least the city of Beaverdam can help with the 
uh, on High County don't see it in their efforts. We can't turn out big tax incentives, and we can't turn out big cash payments, but we can do little things like this. If it comes down to the point where two communities are kind of neck and neck, and they're looking at these communities, we hope that they can see what we've done with our downtown communication, our parks, and our events, and say, hey, this, this town's community's got together, we want to be a part of it. Uh, just a few notes of interest, I will say this. Uh, April 2015 versus April 2014, and these are rough numbers based on our information, but there's, there's about a 5 to 5.5% 5 increase in restaurant, restaurant sales in the last year. How that would directly be one individual, but that was something I thought was kind of interesting. And another thing, I, and I guess the biggest point I like to pull out when we talk about the, the restaurant tax is one third of this tax, one third of it comes from people that do not even live in a lot of Tell that just for some numbers I've got from some of the restaurants, but a lot of where they come from. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, the Beardown City Limit stretches out to the parkway, Arby's, Wendy's, and Denny's, Godfather's, they're all in the city limits. So, you know, where else can you go and get the activities and events and stuff we're doing? And let somebody from outside take a part of it. And again, it's bringing more revenue, it's bringing more activities, and it's for all people. Uh, I know the biggest thing I hear is just so you'll know with upcoming events, of course, our 4th of July, we have a fireworks show with Aaron Tippett concert. <coughs> July 18th, Aaron Craft will be in town for a concert. August 16th is a group, it's a Christian group called Third Day. I'm not that familiar with them, but they called us wanting to come here. I had to talk to some of the management of the news boys and they learned about the facility. Call, had an open date between two shows, here they come. August 29th, uh, we're going to have a portion of the ones where some of the orchestra is going to be here with the Art Guild. And September 12th, we've got 38 Special coming for a concert on a Saturday night. And right now, we're also working, and this is, one, again, one of the great things about my job and to play with these things with the Tourism Commission is the Beaverdam Tourism Commission and the Ohio County Tourism Commission, along with this report, working on a joint project later this fall for the show. So we're really excited about the things we have going on. We're excited when you get the phone calls. Jason called me the other day and said, hey, I just had a call from this, some kind of promoter on the West Coast. Who is, I think that's really cool, the West Coast. I can say that. We can ask the West Coast asking about the facility. They were asking some questions about it. Uh, they're wanting to come by and tour it sometime when they're in this area. Uh, they put on bigger shows and the kind that we can't do because they have the sponsors and stuff to take care of it. And uh, so we're excited about the potential that's there and uh, what we can have in the future. So uh, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go down there and look at it because again, it's something that you're not used to, to seeing around here. And uh, for those of us, those people that told me it couldn't be done, it was done. So, does anybody have any questions? Like I said, I don't, I can just sit here and talk all day about it. I've come to the end of Tracy's notes. So, uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Uh, I'd like to talk about it and everything we're doing. Do you have a list of uh, information of like the dates of things that's happening? Is there a website or anything like that? Most of it is done on the Beaverdam uh, Tourism Commission Facebook page. Okay. We do have a website. Right now, we're in the process of looking for someone for a position of tourism director and park manager, events manager, what we call it. Excuse me. Once we get that on board, we'll be able to have a little more information out there. Right now, it's being done by between myself and poor Lisa, my administrative assistant at City Hall. Uh, every once in a while, she'll tell me I didn't sign up for this. Uh, and then Jason, our tourism commission, that's where it's all kind of being done out right now. We are working on that. We'll try to keep that information out. Facebook seems to be the big way. You know, the biggest thing that surprises me, I still could be out somewhere and have people say, I didn't know there was a park here. Mm -hmm. Didn't know we had a park. I'm like, where have you been? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I've asked them, I said, well, it's, we've advertised on the radio. We don't listen to the radio. Well, it's in the newspaper, don't read the newspaper. Well, on the internet, I don't have a computer. And I just tell us, you need to know what's going on. You need to get out. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you all very much for the opportunity. Again, I appreciate it very much. I look forward to seeing you at a concert sometime. Thank you.